Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you had a very nice weekend. And if it's raining, I hope you are at home. Okay, we're going to check about the platform tonight. So this is the class of tonight. And we need to be finishing uh, the exercise point 3.9. That is uh, the one that you just need to check the correct the core points and then uh, that will be tomorrow will be we will be checking the uh, unit four we're gonna start in it so let's see how it goes okay and well, let's check the attendance of course so Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado Daniel Antonio Luna Daniel Arquímedes Florentino García. Present. Good. Erika Yasmín Martínez Carpio. No, no, Buenas noches. Buenas, good night. Buenas noches. Right. So, Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Herman Alexander Duran Linares. <coughs> Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Iván Petrovich Usman Aquino. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present teacher. Good. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Good. José Alberto Baños Hernández. Cara Lorena. Very good. Cara Lorena Leiva Contreras. Thank you. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Nelson Antonio Erroda Rosales. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Sulma Janet Ramírez Cavalos. Vanessa Noemi Reyes de Mosos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodriguez Sanchez. Okay. okay, got it. Nice. And the rest I gave you already. Uh, Kenya is coming. Check on her. Right. All right. So let's start the class of tonight. It's Okay, Nelson, gotcha. Let's see if we have you here. Yeah, I have you. All right. Okay, let's start with the class. We're going to just review about some of the things that we were checking before, right? So uh, this is something that we were checking, and this is like an extra gamma that we're going to see. So for you to, to check into that. So perfect model in English. Uh, let's see. Vanessa Noemi, could you please help me read in the first paragraph? Okay. Perfect model in English work in similar ways to perfect verb tenses. We form them with the verb have and the past participle of the main verb. When we change an ordinary modal verb to a perfect modal, we change the meaning. In this post, I will, I will talk about how to form and use perfect modal. There will be many example sentences. The download at the end will give you additional practice, practice using perfect modals. Okay, so these are the perfect models. That, what does that mean that we're going to use parse 
participles with the models. Do you remember the models are they, might, should, and things like that? So it says, what are perfect models? We form perfect models with have, that is the auxiliary, and past participle. And we always use the formula to make statement with perfect models. So it's going to be the subject plus the ordinary model plus have plus the past participle. Okay, and to ask a question, we reverse the subject and the ordinary model. So we're going to use the ordinary model, cool, should, things like that. The subject, then have, and then the past participle, okay? So that will be the formula. You know this already, this is just a review. Okay, perfect models of ability, permission, and possibility. When ordinary models become perfect models, they often express possibility, even if the ordinary models suggested other things. So the ordinary models of ability are can and could. The perfect model of ability is could have plus the past participle. For example, he could have driven himself to work today. Okay, very easy, very simple. This sentence has several meanings. He had the ability and or permission in the past to drive himself to work. So that was possible for him in the past. Remember the cool is the past of him. It is possible that he drives himself to work but we are not 100% sure, okay? In this case could have become a model of possibility. Yeah, so possibility, that is what is the most important at this point. And for the negative, it says, he couldn't have driven himself to work today. So this sentence also has two meanings. He did not have the ability and or permission to drive himself to work. Or we are 100% sure that he did not drive himself to work. This is stronger than the same sentence in film. Of course, because we are sure that that didn't happen. That is for sure. Okay. And for the question, we can say, could he have driven sure. himself? Uh -huh. I don't, I, I can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? I the other people? Just me. Yes, I, I can hear the teacher. Me too, teacher. Maybe something happens in your side. Quiero que algo que se le pasa ahí en su audio. No sé. Porque si los demás se pueden escuchar, I guess something's going on. Sometimes that happens. You know, in Zoom, there are some things happening sometimes. Que you can, uh, se puede salir y volver a entrar si quiere probar. Ok, so, in the question, it's going to be, could he have driven himself to work today? I'm not sure. Maybe. So it's a possibility. Ok. It's very simple. Very easy. Do you have any questions with the first part? Okay, nice. Let's go, to the... go ahead. But in this sentence, um, there aren't could or might. I didn't see. I'm sorry? I don't understand because you say that we in this sentence, we use models. Models, yeah. But I, I'm not sure I didn't see any models in this sentence. No, cool. the other part. He had the ability, um, the permission in the past. Ah, this is the the meaning of the mm -hmm. of the sentence. Exactly. Ah, I think that is that was the examples. No, it's the meaning. Yeah, oh. there are two meanings for this. Huh? Oh, the sentence is he could have drive driven himself mm -hmm. to go to driven. driven. Yeah, driven. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 
I understand now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, perfect. That's fine. All right. So that is it. Yeah. And uh, possibilities. This is for possibilities, my friends. So, perfect models of permission and possibility. Okay. The ordinary models of permission are can and may. The ordinary models of possibility are may and might. When these models become perfect models, they all become models of possibility. Okay? So I don't know if you knew this. Ordinary models for possibility are may and might, right? And for permission, can and may. May is the proper one, but you can use can. So, but when you use any of these models with the past perfect, so you are going to use this as possibility. So, for example, number one it says, Carlos may have fixed his car if he has had this, the chance. This is something that could have happened, but we are not sure. It's a possibility. There is also some regret that he never had the chance to fix his car. So, it might be possibility or regret. Okay? Same happens with the other one. I might have studied harder if I had known that the best, that the test would be this hard. This also expresses possibility. I'm not sure I would have studied harder, but it's possible. And again, regret. Oh my goodness, I could have studied. I might have studied harder, right? So, now I can't do anything because the test finishes, okay? And uh, number three is kind of the same. Uh, she might not or may not have come if she had known it would snow. So we are not 100% certain that she would have stayed home because of the weather, but it's possible, okay? She may regret going out in the snow. So for this one, the, maybe the, the difference with the other ones is that it can, it can reflect, it can express both possibility and also it can express regret, okay? To ask a question in this way, we're going to use will because it's a chance. It's a possibility. What would you do? What would have you done? So, would you have studied harder if you had known how hard the test was? This is an indirect question. Remember that for the indirect questions, we're going to use the verb be at the end of the question. Was, in this case. So, I probably would have. The perfect model would have expresses regret for what I did not do. So this is very important. Wool only is regrets. As you remember in the book, we check on that. So I could say, I would have studied more. That is just regret. Not possibility, but regret. Something that you were willing to do, but now it's not possible. Anymore. Do you have any questions with this? This is a review of what we checked, but anyways, I wanted to check. Okay, let's review the other one, last one. Perfect models of advice. You remember that we also were discussing about that. You may be familiar with the ordinary models of advice. Should, out of, and had better. The most common is should, of course. Out of is very useful. You are an owl. Okay, so for example, look at these sentences when they are changed to perfect words. I should have called you before I left. This expresses regret that I did not call you. They ought to have finished working by now. This is a reduction or a conclusion. It is 8 p.m. The word day is long over. We can also say 
they should have finished working by now. So both is correct. And the other one says he had better have paid the rent today. So this is a strong statement, meaning that if he did not pay the rent today, he may lose his home. Okay? He had better have paid the rent today. Yeah, that's a good one. And to ask questions, we're going to use should have. Should I have called you before I left? Yes, I would have appreciated it. So for advice, we're going to, or we can use, should, out of, and had better. So I was telling you the most common is should, then probably had better, and then out. Do you have any questions with this? Okay, the perfect model would have. The perfect model would have is often used in a conditional sentence to express regret. Okay, this is the one for regret. I would have bought a better car if I had known that this one would break down. So this is a clause because of if, remember, that there are two things together, right? So. The most common way is this. It's not obligation that we have to use a clause with would have, but it's the most common way because you are expressing regret. I would have done this if this, if, if this had happened, something like that. Okay, and as you can see for this clause, we're going to use the present perfect here and the past perfect here. Okay, one is past and the other is present. That is something very important. So this expresses regret that I bought the wrong car. The condition was that I did not know that the car I bought had So that is the most common. That is what we'll have. This perfect model can also express this possibility when used in a question. So when you use will have in a question, you are asking about the possibility of doing something or not doing something. So for example, would he have taken the train to work if it stopped near this house? Maybe. It's possible. Okay? So, would have is going to be a question for possibilities to check what would. And also for regrets, actually. You can ask for regrets about that. Any questions with uh, this part? Here, the main verb is in past. It's going to be present perfect because you use have, about. Mm. So this is past participle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Then we have perfect models of necessity and obligation. Okay. So the ordinary modes of necessity and obligation are must and have, you know that, must and have, very similar. Let us see what happens when they become perfect models. So he must have seen the Statue of Liberty. He came to New York by ship. This is no longer a model of necessity. It's now a deduction. So I believe that he did. Everyone who comes to New York by ship sees the Statue of Liberty. So I am sure that he saw. So he, yeah, it's something that must have been happened, right? So he must have seen it's going to be this part. Number two says she has to have read that book. Her professor assigns it every year. This is also a deduction. Since the professor all the years uses the same book, we believe that the person that she has to have read the book is very sure that she read the book. Same happens with the other one. We must not have filled out the forms correctly. 
they didn't process our credit card application. This is also a deduction. Note that we have must not for the negative, not must. So this part is very important. Remember that for this one, we're going to use must not. Okay, so that will be it in negatives. We ask a question with these perfect models a little bit differently. We use the simple past tense. Since I am not sure for the answer, I am answering with a So for example, did she work hard all of her life? Yes, she must, she must have. She was never home with her father. So in questions, we are not going to use must or have to because we don't know if this is for sure. So we are going to use the simple past tense. And then we can answer with uh, the perfect models must or have to. So never in a question. Do you have any questions for this? Okay, so let's practice a little bit. I want you to write five sentences using these models. Whatever you want to use, just try to use different models, okay? Uh, I can move this or I can send you the link on the chat so you can check into that one. And uh, you are going to write the sentences here in the chat as well, okay? So please, five sentences, affirmatives or negatives or whatever you want, and send them on the chat. So we're going to practice a little bit of writing tonight, okay? I will be waiting here.
Pero vaya, en este sería the cool, the bus could have given. Tiene que llevar el presente perfecto. The bus could have given y lo demás is perfect. The rest is perfect. Teacher, where is the exercise? Uh, yeah, you have to write five sentences and send them in the chat. That's the exercise. Huh? What? Very good, that is correct. Nice. Alex may have flown the past week if he had bought the ticket on time. Perfect. That is good.
Hey, I'm still checking on the sentences. Please send them so we can check it. If you have questions, let me know. Very good. That is fine. Thank you, Vanessa. You had better have saved money before your company fired you. Uh, the only is that the second have saved. Yeah, uh, it can be like that. It can be had saved. That is fine. Very good. Still waiting for the rest of the people to send the sentence. Como teacher, no entendí. Uh, yes, the second half also it has to be had. That's the only thing. The rest perfect. In past. In past, yeah. Always or in this case? Just in this case, because of with the structure. But the rest, it could be like that as well. As I was telling you, yeah, it's, it's possible to leave it like that. So it's fine. Okay, hold on. The first one has to be he could have taken because the past participle of take is taken. The bus to home. And the second one, she could have eaten. 
uh, uh, Travis may have come because come is the past participle of come. Talk is good and bout is good. Very good. Nice. That is perfect. Very good, Vanessa. I would have finished my task before the vacation. That is a regret. Very nice. Uh, teacher, I have a problem with the the participles because I don't I don't understand. Yes, uh, it's it's difficult because I I I know the I know the 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 past, but the participle I I never I have have. Never. Uh, no. Mm, I see. Uh, it's very easy. I mean, it's easy to learn, but it's difficult because it's a list. So the verbs, uh, they all have three different ways. The present, like, I don't know, read or uh, give. And the simple past, that is gave. And the past participle, that is given. Uh, in almost all the cases, for example, the verbs that they finish in ed is going to be the same in simple past and past parts. And for the rest, for the irregular verbs, the only thing that you can do is to go on the internet and then look for the list of verbs in past participle and practice, learn. That's the only thing that you do. Okay, you just need to, to learn by heart.
Very good. That is good. Carla Lorena, I could have done better tonight. Nice. Very good, Vanessa. Carmen must not have have eaten chocolate because she is allergic. That's the only thing. Okay, I will give five more minutes so we can move on because we need to move on. Okay, so if you have them, uh, you can send them at any time. But we are going to continue with the book. So we're going to start the unit number four. So management and motivation. So question for you, my friends. What is motivation? In your own words. What is motivation?
when someone is giving you some words that can animate you, that can be uh, emotional, so you can feel better. Very good. So when you say some words to other people and they feel better, right? Nice. So everybody, everybody motivates in different ways. So the question is, what motivates you? For some people, for example, money right, is the motivation. For some other people, is that somebody says, hey, you did a very good job. For some other people, uh, gifts, presents, um, I don't know. There are many ways of motivation. I know that the motivation, the biggest motivation is the family, right? I'm going to do this because of my family. Uh, but besides that one, what other things or what things motivates you? Tell me, please. What motivates you? I think, teacher, the most is the words. They they notice you when you, you make a, a hard word and they they say some words. And also in the companies, um, they give they give to employees like a gift, some some cards for uh, a shopping or like cups, bottles or something like that, that they they give to the employees for, for a motivation, I think. Okay. Yeah, that happens in all the teams, right? For example, if you see movies about sports, it's very common, right? That the manager, the coach, it says you can do this, let's fight, let's do this little thing that is going to help us be the champions. So they say some words, right? It's not only the words that they say, but the way they say is also very, very important, right? So this is something absolutely very, very important. Uh, any other comment? What motivates you to move on to work? To do what you have to do. Uh, I think uh, uh, to to be better, be better, uh, be better and different way and. Uh, full, uh, follow my dreams and goals to to obtain very good I, yeah. so yes something like that also motivates you when you want to learn for example yeah I mean you can learn for different reasons just because you like English for example speaking about the class uh, because you want a better position, because you want to travel to other countries. There are different motivations depending on what you want to achieve, and that uh, jumps in that. So how do you motivate employees to engage in value-adding activities that benefit the organization? Ah, that is a very good question. And it's not easy to motivate other people, right? It's difficult. Do you think employees are more motivated by receiving a higher salary with fewer benefits or a lower salary with more benefits? What do you think? This is an interesting question. Do you think employees are more motivated by receiving a higher salary with fewer benefits or a lower salary with more benefits? What do you think? Depend the, the benefits. Depend, right? Yeah. Yeah, for example, there in Google, you know, uh, it was very common that, uh, I mean, the, the payment is good, but if you finish your work at nine, 
you can go and play, I don't know, ping pong or whatever you want. So that is something that people really like, right? But for some other people, money is more important. Any other opinion on this? Yeah, because I think it yeah. depends on the benefits that I, for me, I prefer a high salary with fewer benefits. And I can buy me or, or get the benefits with my own money. <laughs> Very good. So that is it. So uh, definitely it's important the money right? because in that way you can get your own things. Yeah, because all the benefits the uh, people don't, uh, don't like. It's the benefit. Right? You can enjoy it. That is true. Definitely. So yeah, uh, as I was telling you, I mean, then in, in Google, sometimes you can go and play ping pong, but there are people that they don't play ping pong, so uh, better salary is better for them. Right? So, yeah, good. So we're going to start with a conversation. Uh, I'm going to read it, check the pronunciation, and then you're going to practice, and then we're going to check the vocabulary. So what do you think is the best way to motivate an employee? Creating a workplace where the employee is free to make suggestions. How do you do this? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we avoid rules. There are some rules to prevent chaos, but our main motto is having no rules. Then employees will feel free to in innovate and propose changes. What are some of the benefits that you use to keep your workers motivated? Overtime is not allowed. Wearing a uniform is not a required thing in a company. And the whole company goes on a paid overseas vacation every five years. Pronunciation questions. To prevent the chaos. 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 Overseas is the pronunciation. Overseas. Overseas. Okay. Overseas. Okay, so let's practice. Uh, go ahead. Uh, who say Charles? Charles. Chaos. 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 Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let's practice. Uh, okay, let's start with Fatima and Vanessa. Let's see how it goes. Let me start. Uh, you can start, Fatima. What do you think is the best way to motivate an employee? Creating a workplace where the employee is free to make suggestions. How do you do this? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we avoid rules. There are some rules to prevent chaos. But our main motto is having no rules. Then employees will feel free to innovate and pro propose change. What are some of the benefits that you use to keep your workers motivated? Overtime is not allowed. Wearing a uniform is not a required thing in our company. And the whole company goes unpaid overseas vacation every five years. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Stulma, Jeanette, and Holman, Saul. Okay, what do you think is the best way to motivate an employee? 
<clears throat> How do you uh, <clears throat> creating a workplace where the employees is free to make suggestions? How do you do this? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we avoid rules. There are some rules to prevent chaos. But our main motto is having no rules. Then employees will feel free to innovate and put the first change. What are some of the benefits that you use to keep your workers motivated? Over, over time, it's not all over. Wearing a uniform is not very required. Think in our, our company and the whole company goes on a pain over since vacation every five years. Very good, perfect, thank you. Osvin, is possible for you? Not possible. Okay, let's go. Herma, is it possible for you? Okay. Ivan Petrovic, is it possible for you? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so you are going to be with Carla Lorena. Okay, who is Sarah? Uh, you can start. Okay. Okay, okay go ahead. What do you think is the best way to motivate the employee and employee? Create a workplace where the employees is free to make suggestions. How do you do this? Motivators employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we have all rules. There are some rules that prevent kills. Chaos. Chaos. Okay. But our main motto in having the rules, then employees will feel, will feel, feel free to innovate and propose change. What are some of the benefits that you use to keep your workers motivated? Over time is not a lot. Wearing a uniform is not requiring things for company. Required. And the whole company goes, excuse? Required. Required. Required things in our company and the whole company goes on a paint overseas vacations every five years. Very good, perfect. Uh, Lucy, Natalie, is it possible for you? Okay, Jamie Raquel. Hello. Okay, so Lucy is going to start and you continue, Jamie. What do you think is the best way to motivate an employee? Feeling a workplace where the employee is free to make suggestions. How do you do this? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we avoid rules. There are some rules to prevent chaos. But our main motto is having no rules. Then employees will feel free to innovate and propose change. What are some of the benefits that you use to keep your workers motivated? Over time, it's not long. Wearing a uniform is not required thing in our company. And the world company goes us on pay overseas vacation every five years. 
Very good, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Jose Alberto, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, Kenya Cecilia, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay, then Samantha. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. With Jose Alberto, please. Mm -hmm. I will be still. Okay. okay. What do you think is the best way to motivate an employee? Creating a workplace where the employee is free to make suggestions. How do you do this? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we avoid rules. There are some rules to prevent chaos, but our main motto is having the rules. Then employees will feel free to innovate and propose changes. What are some of the benefits that you that you use to keep your workers motivated? Overtime is not allowed. Within a uh, uniform is not, not a required thing in our company. And the whole company goes on a paid overseas vacation every five years. Very good, perfect, thank you. Uh, David Alexander, is it possible for you? With who? Uh, yeah, let me check. Uh, Nelson Rodas, is it possible for you? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I don't know if you are able to hear. Yes, it's raining a lot. Of... Okay, you... no problem. That is fine. Uh, let's see then, Daniel Archimedes. <laughs> Okay, I am sorry, Daniel Archimedes. Um, I guess it's not possible for me. Let me just check okay. somebody. Uh, Vanessa, no, Vanessa did it already. Like, who else hasn't read? <clears throat> Let me see. Mm, okay, yeah, Vanessa, could you please help? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay I sorry, Vanessa. Okay. What do you think is, uh, is the best way to motivate an employee? Creating a workplace where the employee is free to make suggestions. How do you do this? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. So we avoid rules. There are some rules to prevent chaos, but our main motto is having no rules. Then employees will feel free to innovate and propose change. What are some of the benefits that you use to keep your workers motivated? Overtime is not allowed. Wearing a uniform is not a required thing in our company. And the whole company goes on a paid overseas vacation every five years. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So uh, let's check some pronunciation things. Creating, okay. Uh, suggestions. Uh, let's see. Chaos. Motto. Propose. And that's it. Okay, so now we, let's check a vocabulary. Let's see what you think. Okay. What is a mistake? A error. Like wrong. Okay, something wrong. It's like an error. Nice. Uh, what is what is chaos? So like a disturbance, maybe. Very good. A disturbance, very nice. A uh, motto, what is a motto? Okay. 
Okay. A I model think is the is the principal thing that moves the company, something like that. Very good. It's like a slogan, right? It's like the the way that you think is the philosophy of the company in one sentence. So for example, the motto here is no rules. That is the motto. No rules, you can do whatever you want, but you have to work, of course, right? So it's not that you're not gonna work. So that is the motto, yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Um, overtime, what is overtime? Tempo extra. That is it. When you continue working after your shift is done, is finished. Okay. Um, the whole, what is the whole company? The whole. The complete company. Very good. All the company, the whole people, everybody, right? What is overseas? It's like a supervisor? No, it's not like a supervisor. Okay, overseas is a word that reflects. Uh, uh, no, excuse me. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it, this is something that reflects like, uh, what can I say, very far away. Far away in other countries. Is the outside, outside? Something like that. It's in other countries. Very far away. So, imagine that I say to you, we are going to go overseas. That means that we're going to take an, a plane and we're going to go maybe to Europe or Africa or Australia. So, you need to cross the ocean, cross the sea. That is all. Okay, in mind, that is good. I mean, the whole company goes on a paid vacations overseas every five years. So if you work there in that company, no rules. You can do whatever you want. And also, every five years, you don't have to pay anything. Okay, you go on vacations to Europe and everything's paid. Okay, so those are benefits, but no big salaries. Well, very good benefits. Right? Good, interesting. Do you have any questions on this conversation? Okay. So now we're going to answer these questions. Do you think external incentives, money, and extra benefits are better to keep employees motivated? What do you think, friends? I think it's okay. It's like, it's like, for example, I have a, a percent to 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 get or to get a, a gift so i try to to obtain that that percent for or give or have a a a gift is like I have a a motivation, a extra motivation because my principal my first motivation is uh work and and earn earn my 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 salary but uh also give a gift if I have a good percent with my with my work. I have I think it's 
It's okay. Very good. So it's a good thing, right? Incentives. I mean, money and extra benefits is not is not bad for anybody. <laughs> Any other comments on the first question? I think yes. It's a, uh, for example, in, I work in Honduras, and I have a private pre private medical insurance. Uh, some employees have a one one month one month of vacation, and they pay. Fourteen salaries per year, and it's, it's a good, a good extra benefit. Yeah, actually, that sounds very good. Yeah, fourteen salaries a year is nice. In mind that in June and December you have an extra salary. Yeah, that works, and you are motivated. In July. In July. Uh -huh. Definitely. So it sounds very good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a it's a kind of company where you want to work. Definitely. Okay, number two. Everybody says. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Okay, what is your opinion about the following? Motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake. Do you believe it's difficult in that way? That according to what it says there. Okay. Anybody, an opinion without? What is your opinion about motivating employees is difficult if they believe they will make a mistake? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's difficult because the employees have in this mind that they were going to make some bad. So is the negative the negative thoughts in, in their mind. So I think this this kind of of thinking it's difficult to change. So it can we can motivate it if we if the employee has this this thinking. Okay, very good, perfect. So yes, it is different. If they believe that something is not good, that they are going to do something that is cause some problem, definitely so they won't be able to work or do anything else by right? so. Okay, number three, everybody. What do you think about the methodology implemented by the manager in the conversation? No rules, vacation for everybody. What do you think about that? Any opinion on the question number three? Yeah, I think it's a good, it's a good money <laughs> because uh, they they don't have any rules, and I think this method keeps the employees motivated and also um work hard. Okay, interesting. In order to give the all the benefits, if, yeah. if they don't work hard, and they they lose the benefits. Okay, yeah, definitely. They have to continue working, uh, so they can keep the benefits. So 
Uh, the question is, do you believe that this by working in El Salvador, remind that you have people there that say no rules, no rules, do your job and no rules. Uh, that might be working here in El Salvador. What do you think? For me, uh, it's the pen of the culture picture because we are like um, no sé, desobedientes. So maybe we 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 do all that that I will we want. But it could be, could be funcional. How do you say it? It could work. It could work. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, somebody else was going to say something. Let's see. I think that is not totally uh, healthy for a company because. Uh, you can remove uh, some uh, limits with your employees and you can uh, have uh, totally freedom for doing any, uh, every, uh, or anything. Oh, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's for, for a company it, it, uh, here in El Salvador is, is very complicated, but uh, uh, we have a culture that I don't know what is the uh, what can I say that that is in in Spanish is a gangerismo. Uh, yeah, it's like I don't know. They take advantage. Ah, uh -huh. so uh, when you can see oh, in this company, I can do it what what whatever, uh, and I know that. Uh, we don't have a rules and we don't have a, a um I lost the the, the word is a, a castigo punishment ah okay it's, uh, we don't have a punish and bonus uh, so uh, it's it's not that totally healthy for a company okay yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I believe that yes, it's good to give benefits, but sometimes when you give a lot of benefits, people, I mean, they do whatever they want. They don't go work. Yeah, so it's like stress. Uh, if you have a little stress in your life, it's good. No stress is not good. So a lot of stress is also not good. So there should be like a balance, right? Some benefits is good. I mean, you can I don't know, stay at home one day at a week and then work from home. I don't know, depending on what you need, to do, right? But I mean, if you have a, a world like that one and the payment is good and you have a that kind of environment, of course, it's a nice thing to do if you are the employee. I mean, there are two different points of view. The employee that is happy that there are rules and the and the boss and the company, right? So they have to achieve some goals. So yeah, has to has to be very uh, good evaluated. Nice, nice. So, uh, how to use general forms as subjects? So, you know that the gerunds are the ones that finish in ing. So let's read about those and then let's check about it. Uh, Ivan Petrovich, could you please help me reading the chart? Uh, we can't hear you. Excuse me, the microphone off. Oh. Okay. Uh, how to use uh, what is pronunciation? Jerus. Gerund. Gerund. How mm -hmm. to use gerunds for a subject? A subject. A gerund take the E N G syllable I -N -G. at the end of the base objects. And the base for a gerund 
get functions in the same way is a noun. And a such they can be used in place of the subject sentences. Communicated with employees is necessary to know their needs. Recognizing progress is an important factor in motivating others. Uh, encouraging. Encouraging. Subordinates. Encouraging. Thank you. Encouraging. Subordinates. To be successful is essential for the grounds of the company. Very good. Perfect. So this is the rule. Gerunds are the verbs with ing at the end. Okay. So it says a gerund functions in the same way as a noun. This is the important part. A gerund functions in the same way as a noun. And as such, they can be used in place of the subject of the sentence. So there are two things. A general can be a noun, the name of something, the name of an activity, most likely. And since it's a noun, we can use these verbs with ing as subjects of the sentences. So that's why here, communicating is at the beginning of the sentence. And it says communicating with employees is necessary to know their so communicating is a noun and is the subject of the sentence. You can see here that in this kind of sentences, when we use gerunds as nouns, we don't use the verb to be, right? No verb to be. And that's how we are going to identify is the gerund is a verb or if it's a noun. If we have the verb to be with the gerund, well, that is a verb. If we don't have the verb to be there with the agent, then that is a noun. Okay? Next sentence says, recognizing progress is an important factor in motivating others. Okay? And the last one says, encouraging subordinates to be successful is essential for the growth of the company. So on all of those, you can see that the ing is not a verb, it's a noun. Okay? So that is the main objective of this part. Uh, do you have any questions here? Okay. If we don't have any questions, we're going to do the exercise five. Complete the sentence with gerunds, then compare your answers with a classmate. Discuss if you agree or disagree with the motivational factor the sentence described. Okay, I will give you a few minutes for you to finish the exercise, okay? Let's make it. If you don't know a word, let me know. So look for that in the dictionary, and then you are going to let me know, okay? Teacher, what is praise? Very good question. Anybody has looked for that one? Has anybody looked for that word already? So can share with the rest of the class?
Okay, so praise is when you say something good, when you say, oh, you are the one, you are amazing, things that one. So that is praise. Okay. Good, good. Okay, did you finish? Okay, number one is already there. Getting paid vacation is a great motivational factor for employees to work hard. Of course, imagine that you are in your work and your boss says, okay, uh, in December, everybody were going to go to, I don't know, to Italy. Oh my goodness, I mean, that is a very good thing. But here in El Salvador, I believe we don't have companies that they do that. Well, maybe they pay you the camera, right? But not to go to Italy. So uh, that is a very good thing. Uh, in the US, yes, there are jobs like that. In Europe, there are jobs like that. But in El Salvador, not, not much, to be honest. Number two, uh, who wants to share number two? Me. Okay. Providing price. Praise. How? Praise. praise. Providing praise to employees when they have accomplished accomplished accomplish a task successfully reinforces their good performance. Very good. Perfect. Providing praise to employees when they have accomplished a task successfully reinforces their good performance. So that is a very good thing. Very nice. Uh, actually, it's a very good idea. Maybe with limits, but yeah, you can say, hey, you did a very good job. You are doing something amazing. I don't know. All those things are... That. And praise is like that one. I mean... That verb is very common to use it in religion. Praise the Lord, right? Praise God. So it's a very common way to use this verb. Um, there is no other, I guess. Reinforces. What is to reinforce? Anybody?
Okay, to rain that it keeps more hard, something like that. Okay, very good. So yeah, when you push more, when you give, uh, or oh, sometimes it's when you, you know that people they know something, but you repeat that. So you reinforce something, right? Number three, who wants to share number three? facilitated the essential tools and projects need to perform their duties is crucial to keep them satisfied with their jobs. Very good. Facilitating the essential tools and projects need to perform their duties is crucial to keep them satisfied with their job. Good. Definitely. I mean, you don't have the tools. Mm, it's not possible to do your job, right? So, duties, what is duties? It's like the task, something that you must to make. Very good, like the tasks, like obligations that you have to do in a job. Good. Who wants to share number four? Teacher, excuse me, duties is like a, a mandatory tax? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Clear communication channels is essential for employees to express suggestions and timely information. Perfect. Very good. So establishing clear communication channels is essential for employees to express suggestions and timely information. Definitely that is very important, right? And this is correct, of course. So clear communication channels, that is very difficult. Uh, even when they have very good things, there is something going on there. So sometimes it's, something is lost. Good. Uh, number five, who wants to share number five? Respecting the opinion of others is important to keep communication open. Very good, perfect. Respecting the opinion of others is important to keep communication open. Definitely, right? Respect is a very important thing. It's very, very important. Nice. And the last one, who wants to share the last one? Promoting healthy relationships with your teammates is an important factor to keep motivation, to keep motivation up. Very good, perfect. Promoting healthy relationships with your teammates is important factor, is an important factor to keep motivation up. So yeah, that is something very, very nice. Uh, teammates, what is teammates? The partners. Yeah, your co-workers, right? Very good. Nice. Do you have any questions here in this part? Okay. So for us to continue, we're going to practice again a little bit of writing. So I want you to write up a little paragraph using three gerunds as nouns, not as verbs, as nouns. And please share that on the chat, here in the chat, okay? So a paragraph with three gerunds and send it to the chat. I will be waiting here.
If you have questions, let me know. Of course, I will be. Very good, Holman. That is a very good paragraph. Thank you very much. Very nice. Good example, my friends. So I'm waiting for the rest.
Okay, the first part is good, Carla. Nice. The second one is also good, nice. Very good. So we have both uh, Vanessa and Fatima. Very nice. Perfect. Thank you. So let's wait a little bit more for the rest.
Perfect. So the next up pair is also good. Very good. We checked the last ones that is Jose Alberto. Very nice. Reinforcing the knowledge is very good one. So we don't have time for more, but um, well, we're going to continue, of course, next class. Do you have any questions from the class of tonight? Okay. Remember that this week is the last one. Monday is the last uh, day of class. So we need to move on with the platforms. Very, very good. Okay. So we have to finish the weekend. The weekend we have to finish all the platforms, the final test and everything. Please move on with that. So, and also remember about the survey that we're going to do from Insiform uh, on the, the last class. Nice. Let's check the attendance and then let's go to bed. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Daniel Antonio Luna. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino García. Present. Good. Erika Yasmín Martínez Carpio. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present teacher. Good. Herman Alexander Duran Linares. Present. Good. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Jamie Present. Raquel. Thank you. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Holman Saúl Girón Sánchez. Present. Good. Jose Alberto Baños Hernández. Present, teacher. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present, teacher. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. 
Nelson Antonio Arroda Rosales. Present. Good. Oslin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Zulma Janet Ramírez Sábalos. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Present teacher. Very good. So, and we have here the last one. Eleven. Very nice. Perfect, my friends. It was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Good night, Chair. Good night. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Hello, Christian. Hello.